So I see this article come out the other day, and this isn't the first time that I've seen somebody talk about this, but this is the first time that I've seen an article presented like this in this manner about this topic. There are 5 million empty bedrooms in Ontario amid housing crisis. So here's the thing. I don't even have to read this article to know that I'm already going to hate this article. And the reason why I hate this article is, to me, it looks like the way they framed it is... The fact that they're alluding to is that if you have empty bedrooms in, in your house, you're essentially causing the housing crisis. In the body of this article here, we have a, a tweet from Daniel Foch, who's a, um, I think that's how you say his last name. He's a realtor in Ontario. He's very educated in investing in the economy and all things real estate. There aren't too many people as educated as him. So I'm not definitely not knocking what he's saying here. Um, he basically says that these 5 million bedrooms are the equivalent to 25 years of construction, uh, but unfortunately, these bedrooms are funding boomer retirement. Um, I think that last sentence is a joke because Trudeau recently just said that housing prices need to come down, but they can't come down because they're they are the retirement plan for a lot of people in the country. But regardless, if every single person who had an empty bedroom rented it out, apparently the housing crisis would be mostly solved. So if you have an empty bedroom in your house, you're essentially part of the problem. Is this article saying you are the problem? No, but the word packaging is sort of suggesting that. Empty bedrooms amid housing crisis. Well, we've always had millions of empty bedrooms and there just so happens to be a housing crisis now. So now we're looking at empty bedrooms as a possible solution for that. Regardless, this is essentially what the media does and they've done it over and over and over and over and people fall for it every single time. And what I think they're trying to do here is they're basically trying to lay the groundwork to create a new bad guy or a new boogeyman. Just like they did with the foreign investors, just like they did with the normal investors, just like they did with the developers and the realtors and the flippers and the landlords, they start putting out articles like this that kind of lead people down this pathway like it's an immoral thing to do blank. It's an immoral thing to own a home and rent it out to somebody. It's immoral to flip a property. It's immoral to buy property in a country where you don't even live in. It's immoral to have empty bedrooms in your house. And from building that narrative, and basically creating this like societal pressure on people who do these things, they can now basically, you know, it allows them to bring out new laws and add more taxes and people will be in favor of it because they think the people that have to pay these taxes or that the people that are subjected to these laws are deserving of this because of the narrative that has been building up into you know the time leading up to the point where they've actually launched these laws or taxes. Like before they bring out a foreign buyer's tax, they first have to put out a whole bunch of articles for why foreign buyers have raised the price of real estate. So everybody thinks that a foreign buyer's tax is a good idea first, right? And maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this is how it starts every single time. It starts with small articles like this, and then slowly they build the narrative over time. And then maybe the articles start to get a little bit more aggressive. And I can see where maybe they find a way to introduce an empty bedrooms tax or something like that. And then everyone will be like, yeah, you know what? They should pay tax because they're being greedy and those bedrooms could be used for people to actually live in. I'm not saying they're gonna do this, but why are we even talking about this? Like, how is this even a viable option? Like if people wanted to rent out these supposedly empty bedrooms, they would already be rented out. Like, are we putting these articles out so people feel the societal pressure to rent out these bedrooms? That's what it seems like is probably going to happen. Cause here's the other thing, like these aren't empty bedrooms, right? Like my fiance, we sleep in one bedroom. I have a studio in another one, which is this. I have a TV room. I have a guest bedroom and then I have a dressing room where all of my dress clothes and normal clothes go and then that basically takes up an entire room right there. And we need all of these bedrooms. That's why we bought the house. It's not hoarding space. It's not being greedy. We need the space. I'm not gonna rent out the additional bedrooms in my house and then live in the same amount of space as I did when I was in a condo. So I think the basis around this article is dumb to be completely blunt. And I think they're gonna try to start making people feel bad about having too many bedrooms in their house. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just like, 
speculating that this is going to happen. But regardless, I thought this was an interesting topic because I don't see any other reason why we would be putting articles out about this and talking about this. Like, hey, yeah, we can solve the housing crisis if we just fit five people in a one bedroom instead of one person. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like the video. I'm that Agent Kelly. I'm making moves to move you. Peace.